All right, this is like the second time that I've tried to record this tutorial. <laughs> so first time it didn't really record all the way through um, and the audio was out. So I don't know what happened, but hopefully this time it'll work. Um, hello and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over the look dev nose. I'm here rubbing my face because I'm super tired, but uh, I want to get this out to you guys. The look dev nodes are super important in Gaia because especially for new people who are new to Gaia and kind of get scared at all the options that you have over here, the look dev nodes help people get acclimated to what's possible in Gaia. And look dev is a good way of using simple nodes, one or two nodes to create an easy and awesome looking landscape without having to use masks and a bunch of other nodes mixed together. Uh, but you can use them like any other node in Gaia where you can have, you know, five folds, 20 stacks, eight shears if you wanted to all combined together. So you don't have to stick with just a simple linear workflow. You can definitely be more procedural about it. Uh, and it's a good place to just for beginners to start. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to start with a multi-fractal and I'm not gonna change this fractal at all. This will be exactly what we have. All I did was I changed the variation a little bit uh, just so I have these smoother areas and these more rocky areas, just so we have some variation in the fractal. And this is going to be what we have. And these look dev nodes, uh, even if there's, you know, not very many of them, uh, there's only eight of them, we can create almost an unlimited amount of different looking landscapes just with these eight nodes. So to start, uh, we're going to use uh, anastomosis. And now this is a unusual node for a look dev node because it actually introduces smaller features in your landscape rather than totally changing it. And you can also use it for uh, texturing purposes as well. So if you were to attach the multifractal straight to the anastomosis, you won't notice much of a difference at first. You notice a little bit of a difference, uh, but not much. So we go from uh, what we have now, this is what we had before, and this is what we have now. And what we have it doing currently is it's creating these flows going down our landscape, but it's not working with any actual real terrain data to do this. It's just kind of, Gaia's kind of just calculating what needs to be done uh, based on what it's able to work with in the variation of the multifractal, which is why I chose this. But if you want to have a greater effect that you can have more room to play with, you can apply this uh, to an erosion. So let's go ahead and add the erosion. I'm just going to stick with the default erosion for now. I really hope that the audio is recording. <laughs> or else it's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, all right, so we have the erosion. Now let's go ahead and add the anastomosis. Now you can see a much greater effect because now it actually has flow data to work with. And we're just attaching that directly to the output of the erosion. So that's what we had before. This is what we have now. And this is just with the default settings here. <clears throat> we also have different down cutting options here. So we are using flows right now, which is what it defaults to. One of my favorites is the destructive one. The reason why is because it just adds nice little tiny bits of debris in your landscape. So what we had before and what we have now, and it's just small amounts and we can increase the influence to kind of see a better example of that. And let's go ahead and increase the impact area so that there's more of an area for it to play with. That might be too much. Oh, that's just fine. So small amounts here and there. You can see them out here in the distance quite well. Let's go back to the erosion and kind of just hop back between the erosion and the anastomosis. Really cool. Makes it look a little more rocky. Uh, we also have rivers. And I actually haven't really played with rivers, so that's going to be slightly interesting for me to see. Oh yeah, yeah, that just kind of really downcutted the uh, downcut the terrain quite a bit. But you can see how it's following those flow lines, creating these deep grooves in the landscape. So we kind of went from uh, multi from this multifractal to this anastomosis. And you can see how it's completely changed our landscape. We actually get these really cool shallot style looking areas, which would be really good for um, uh, river valleys or even bluffs. I don't want to be throwing that together right now because that would be more than what I want to tackle, but it would be a, a, a good way to do it. So let's go ahead and remove the erosion and the anastomosis. And I'm just going to move down the line. So we're just going to go to fold. And 
if you guys are long-term followers of my Gaia YouTube series, or Gaia tutorial series, you'll know that Fold is one of my all-time favorites. Now, I actually have an example of how Fold is used in nature pretty well. Let me pull that up real quick. I saved it out as a file called Peaky. And you can really see how this Fold is affect. And this is a real photo. This isn't a a render or a 3D image. This came from a video that I was watching on an outdoor channel and I was like, that's really cool. I want to try to recreate that. You would recreate that with Fold. And you can see how we're getting similar features like right here as you do here. And it would take a little bit of uh, processing and we would have to uh, uh, really play around with it and be selective of where it's being applied. But Fold on its own works pretty well applied across the board. And you can get some alpine looking mountains with fold. So you just uh, apply fold and then change the angle just a bit. And depending on what you need, uh, just something that looks a little more peaky, I guess. I like to use anywhere between 45 and 60 degrees. It tends to give me some really good effect. Um, but I don't want to play around with it too much. But you do have these really good settings here that will kind of help you get what you need. So you have the overall scale of your fold. I like to increase that when I need more of a flat line ridge across the top. Um, as well, uh, That'll be the rift, actually. The scale will be how much folding you won't see, like right here. The, the rift will be what you see in between the folds. And in some cases, it'll actually flatten the top, flatten the top of your landscape, especially if you're using like a mountain peak. Just makes it look really hard. Folding is going to introduce a lot of different uh, noise di distortions in these folds, as you can see here. I'm getting something really cool looking. And then the midpoint, um, I don't actually play with the midpoint too much, but that's what's going to give you your kind of flatter tops here. You can increase or decrease that, and it'll just kind of take your peak and flatten it or not flatten it and then your range and that's just going to be the range at which the folding occurs as we increase it now we're increasing it more on these steep uh, surfaces rather than across the fractal itself completely if we decrease the range it's going to start affecting the fractal more across the entire fractal rather than just on certain edges and this is really good for uh, desert landscapes that have a lot of jutting rocks coming out of sand. This is the effect that you're going to want to really go for. And then the angle is just the angle at which it occurs. Elevate will essentially just take your base layer and just normalize it a little bit and now you have more of a large structure to work with rather than uh, the smaller structure to work with. I'm going to increase the range just a tad bit more because I actually like using Elevate in some certain cir circumstances, but I rarely do use it. Uh, this actually looks really cool. It would probably look good with a erosion. So let's go ahead and add an erosion. And Camtasia is open right here. I'm going to close that. Yeah, so we got these really cool looking ridges can get some really cool looking like sci-fi-esque style shots here. This could be like really dark black rock and the flows right here could be like lava. Who knows? It's, I mean, it's all down to like what your imagination is. So, uh, but I don't like typically like using the elevate option. So as you can see, just three nodes gave us a completely different landscape. We started with this and we ended with this. And that took only three nodes. So you can get some good looks just with using the look dev nodes. Not a whole lot of nodes there to use. And, and they actually look quite pleasing to the eye. And in some cases, depending on how you process the nodes, excuse me, it's way past my bedtime. <laughs> uh, you can actually get some really good natural looking ones as well. So let's go ahead and go to Stacks. And Stacks is probably one of the more important additions to Gaia. Uh, it will provide stratification and jutting rocks, something that you want to see in a lot of like desert scenes uh, or uh, canyons. But it also helps introduce noise on steep surfaces 
so that you actually have data to work with in Gaia to texture as well as using for masking for uh, further processing outside of Gaia. Stacks is where you want to do that. So let's go ahead and add it. And you can use numerous stacks together. You don't have to stick with one. We're just going to stick with one in this case. Uh, but you can use numerous stacks together to get a bunch of different looks. And this is what we end up with. Really nice looking stratified natural looking terrain. And you can see here we don't have a whole lot of steep edges that don't have detail in them. Like even down here we're getting some detail. Uh, we can combine multiple stacks together with the original landscape and get uh, even more detail in. We can change the settings here. Uh, and then we can actually use a third one or a fourth one or however many we're using. But let's say in this case we use two stacks uh, to create our landscape and then a third one we just kind of reduce the stacking overall and then include the talus pass. And this is good because if you want to have a nice looking mesa, talus, really heavy talus is a key player in that. And that's where stacks comes in handy. You can increase the talus and uh, you can see here in just a second. Uh, talus will be that those rocks and sediments that break off of mesas and create like that, that skirt of debris on top underneath a big rocky structure that's what talus is going to be and what's nice is that you don't have to use a height selector in it, it looks like it kind of did its thing but I might have to change the settings here um, it has a height selection in it already so you don't have to have a height selector for it you can just increase the height and hopefully that will bring in more of the effect I'm thinking the height what might have been a little too low and you can use it for uh, an additional type of thermal weathering. So if you have like a thermal erosion on here, you can include a stacks. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting that talus right here. And we're creating these mesa-like structures. If we were to sing out, sing, single out this landscape, we would have more of a mesa-like structure. And then you can add another stack with a slightly less talus pass. And then you can create a really cool looking mesa. Stacks is really important. I, I, I would consider it as probably the number one more most important node added to Gaia since oh geez I, I was using Gaia way back in the day. I would probably say um, since like Surface which we're going to get into right here. <laughs> and I think it was introduced around the same time. Now I'll go back. I think it was pro it's probably the most important node added since Breaker. Breaker is extremely important. I use Breaker in pretty much every every project that I that I use. And Breaker's been around for a while, uh, probably since the beginning. I can't remember. I've been using Gaia for so long, like essentially since its conception, inception, conception, probably conception. Yeah, I've been using it for a while. It's it, it's been a long time. After so many years, details start mixing together. Stacks is really cool. So let's go ahead and use Canyonizer. Um, and this is probably better used with something like stacks. So let's go ahead and add stacks one more time. Because stacks is going to give you a good canyon look already, but canyonizer is going to do something completely different. It's, it's going to actually restructure the fractal around to look more like a canyon. So it's going to have higher elevations and uh, lower uh sea levels so that you can have deep cutting grooves through your landscape and that will look better once we apply an erosion too. So we're going to stick with the default stacks. We're going to add the canyonizer. And we might change some of the settings for the canyon if we need to. You can see how it's adding these deeper cuts and grooves into the landscape here. Yeah, we're going to probably increase the formation a bit and see how that goes. And we might increase the maximum depth. It just depends. Oh, no, there, there we go. That, that was good. The formation worked fine. So uh, let's go ahead and add an erosion. And you could probably just do uh, a canyonizer then a stacks, but, or just a canyonizer and not even include stacks. I mean, the choice is yours at Chuckarama. So uh, they are not 
that was not a plug for him. I just, it's always been something I've said. So um, let's go ahead and just use straight canyonizer. And a multifractal might not be the best uh, option to use in this case when using canyonizer, or we might have to blow out some uh, different settings here. So let's go back to canyonizer and let's increase the maximum depth, maybe 38%. And if we need to, we'll decrease the streamline maybe. Uh, with the octaves, you have to consider octaves to be the same as any other octave setting inside of Gaia. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, in a nutshell, lower octaves in a fractal make the fractal more dull. Higher octaves make it more sharp. So if you increase the octaves here, these canyon effects that we're getting here are going to become more sharp. And if we decrease it, you can kind of see how we're getting a canyon right here. And if you decrease it, they're going to become more soft. And like I said, this multifractal might not be the best choice to show off this effect. But it's actually doing a pretty good job. We're getting these cutting grooves in here. Uh, we are getting these nice uh, canyon looks right here. So you have this peak right here and this peak right here and this canyon that kind of goes down into a valley. So. Uh, with a little bit of processing and selection, you can definitely get some nice looking effects. Here we go, right here. You got a canyon right here. You got a little wall on this side and a wall on this side. And what's nice is that these walls are actually detailed. So you can process them in a uh, in Gaia if you wanted for better texturing. And then you won't have stre stretched textures. Overall, really cool. So, and that. Again, that's just three notes. We're not using probably no more than four notes here for any of these look dev notes. So it's quite quite fun, especially if you're new. So let's go ahead and use Shatter. Shatter, I can't remember which one it is. I don't know if it's Shatter or Carver used to be Landform. Uh, Landform is no longer a um, node inside of Gaia, but it used to exist. It's been named and removed, it's been renamed and I can't remember if it's Shatter or Carver. It's one of those two. I could be wrong about both, but I'm, I'm positive that it's one of those two. But I like Shear quite a bit because uh, instead of using a Displace or Warp node, you can actually use the Shatter, which will include things like its uh, collapsing ability and the feature scale, which is what you don't get, really get in a Warp or a Displacement. So you get a keep your overall landscape formation, like as you can see here, but it's just adding that shatter effect, a slight erosion effect to your overall landscape, and you don't have to worry about it dis dis uh, distorting your, your landscape too much. So if you have a feature that you really like, chances are it's just gonna be affected minimally uh, while you're retaining about 99% of your overall landscape form. So it's really nice. I like shatter just because of that. And we can increase the strength here. And you can we will just really overdo it, 222%. That way you can really get a good idea of what's going on here. There we go. So before and after. And that's what I like about Gaia is that a lot of its nodes are just so basically named. Like anastomosis is probably as scientific as it gets inside of Gaia. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory, like no joke. It just shatters your landscape. Let's go ahead and add a uh, erosion. I'm gonna stick with the defaults. And what's cool is that you can reprocess the erosion after you apply it. So we apply the erosion and let's go ahead and reprocess it with another shatter. So let's go ahead and add a shatter here. That's what we have. Let's go ahead and add a shatter. And we'll just use the defaults for shatter. There we go. Now we've gotten rid of the, uh, with the exception of this right here, which is what we would have to fix that in this, probably by reducing the amount here in this shatter. But now we have a non-uniformed erosion applied to our landscape. So before we had this, Come on. There we go. We have like this 
unified erosion across our entire landscape and we have a very what i would call especially back in the world machine days a very standard world machine erosion in this case a very standard gaia erosion with introducing another shatter it distorts the erosion while retaining the erosion so now we have an eroded landscape but we shattered it and now it's not uniform we've broken it up quite a bit and that's good and now we can apply another erosion pass if we need to we can go through and fix these harsh edges like right here and right here uh, and uh, there's a couple other things we can do so really nice and that was just three nodes right there super easy surface is really really good and i'm going to show you a little thing that i like to do with surface so if you go back to the multifractal uh, you'll see that we have a very nice looking noisy fractal with some variation in the noise but it's still really bland like the bland is relative i suppose because it's actually really nice and noisy like this is a good looking fractal but uh, it is bland. So what we want to do is we want to add additional details to it. And we can do that with surface. Now you'll see as soon as I connected it, there is a slight change. Not much of a change. Just very slight. If you just keep your eye peeled on one of these points. Just a small change. But we can change that. We can increase the strength. So let's go to about 50% strength and about 50% density. And this is being applied to a fractal uh, that hasn't been eroded yet. So that's good. You'll actually be able to see a major change after that. So this is without, and this is with. And what it does is it just adds small amounts of extra detail all over your landscape. But it's best used after you erode. So let's add just an erosion here, basic erosion. Nothing special, your default settings will do. If you wanted to get pretty specific in what you wanted to do, we could definitely do that. So we can uh, right click on the erosion, go to presets, and choose something like the bias 60, or what I like is the slope bias 85. That gives you a really cool looking hard erosion look. And it looks really good with the multifractal, as you can see here. I like using the presets for tutorials because I've gone over these settings already and I don't want to go over them again. So I like using the presets just so I can quickly move along in the tutorial. So let's go ahead and add the surface to the erosion. Uh, you see that almost immediately as soon as we connected it, we're getting a whole bunch of extra little details in our erosion and in our landscape. And that's good because if you go up to an edge here, like this edge, we see our basic erosion it's just kind of bland and not a whole lot of detail there. We can introduce some more detail by using the uh, debris options inside of the terrain. But instead of doing that, we can just use a surface option. And we can be a little selective with the strength, the coverage, and the density. But what I like to do is I like to use the surface uh, node with the rock data map. So let's go down to the data maps here and let's use the rock map. And I like to just attach that to my erosion. And then that will select the rock data map from our landscape here and apply that to the mask of our surface. <clears throat> now it will apply that hard, rough uh, detail to the rock map, but I like to change it to rocky. And this will make it look like there's tiny little bits of rock scattered everywhere around our landscape. Don't worry if it looks noisy. You'd be exporting this at a higher resolution anyways, but um, you can decrease the strength and you can decrease it quite a bit actually and still retain quite a bit of detail like that. So now you don't have to worry about really harsh peaks in your landscape. But what I like to do even after that, I like to add an additional erosion and this part's really important. <clears throat> I'm building out at 2K, by the way, so if it seems like it seems like it's taking a long time, that's why. So 
we've now doubled up our erosion. We'd probably be a little more selective in what we want to do here. We'd probably use slightly less erosion for this second pass. We don't want to use more. You want to use heavy erosion for your first pass, uh, first erosion, and then less erosion for your second one. But this kind of helps prove the point I'm trying to make. This rock map selects areas in your landscape where it makes sense for rocks to be. And the surface mixed with the rocky style will provide additional rock detail based on this rock map. And this erosion will erode away the unnecessary bits from the rock map while retaining the necessary bits from it. So if you look up here, like in these areas, we now have these nice little rock slides and these little hoodoo thingies out here um, and little rocks jutting out of the landscape here. If we go back to our original erosion, see here we have uh, we have some debris in our erosion. <clears throat> uh, if I can find it somewhere around here. In one of these, there's like a debris option. Um, it's pro I'm probably missing it and it's probably right in front of my face. Anyways, um, it's introducing some debris here, but when we add the surface, now we're adding debris everywhere, not just where the erosion's being applied heavily on the slopes. And then that second erosion comes through, clears it all out, and now we have nice little rocks appearing where they need to be, where it makes sense. So you have a nice rocky hill right here. This can be like a green hill with some little scattered rocks across it. Whatever it is that your imagination can come up with. That's how I like to use the rocky surfacer, and that's just one way. You don't have to do it just that way. But that is, um, that is one way that you can do it, and it looks really nice. And that was, what, another four nodes, five total? That, that's not too bad. All right, now we have Carver. <clears throat> and Carver is awesome. It's, it's, a very, it's more of a uh, larger effect than shear or scatter or shatter. So it, uh, you'll, you'll really notice some differences here after we apply it. As you can see here, it's adding quite a bit of warping and distortion to our landscape, but it's also adding in uh, small amounts of erosion as well. And if we were to increase the erosion power, you can really see what it's doing, if you haven't already. It is very, uh, uh, very highly distorted and it looks really good, especially after you apply erosion to it. So let's <coughs> go ahead and look at the before and the after. Looks really cool. Gives you these really cool, really pinched and distorted rock formations. And then you can add something like erosion. But in this case, let's go ahead and use a different erosion. Let's use thermal. We're going to simulate some thermal erosion here as a first pass. <clears throat> and you'll see here, I like using a uh, carver when I have to make scenes that are really extremely rough and rocky with small patches of sedimentation. So I'll use thermal to get the sedimentation like you see here. So this is before and this is after just to fill in the gaps. And uh, we can actually use a lot more now. Let's go to a preset. And we'll try decimated. That might be too much, but we'll we'll try decimated. And I am again building at 2K, so if it seems like it's taking a long time, that's why. I like to build at 1K or 2K, and export at 4K or 8K or higher. But I most definitely like to build at higher resolutions, even if it means I have to wait longer in between adding a node or changing a setting. I at least get the most uh, information about my build as possible. Getting some artifacts here, probably because of the amount of decimation we are including on our landscape, so that's just a little too much. Let's go ahead and change that. Uh, we'll do heat fused rock. We'll try that. It'll give us this like lumpy look, like what we're getting here, but it might not be as decimated. So, if anything, we can always just go back to the defaults. The defaults were fine. There we go. That's not as bad. We have uh, this harsh, billowy uh, rock, or soft, billowy rock, and this soft landscape right here. 
So that's really nice. And then again, if you wanted to, just real quick, go back to surface and use the, uh, from the thermal right here, you can use the deposit as the mask like that. It might not be enough in this case. Um, so you can go back and use a rock map if you want, but you can do that. And you can add rocks scattering in here so you can have like a really rocky uh, kind of meadow, I guess. And if you go back to the Lake Blanche video that I made, this is one way to do it, just like this. So I will be going over that in a future video. Anyways, this is really nice. Um, again, we can go back to the defaults. just like that. And to do that, I just shift clicked and hovered over these and this button right here will reset it to the default for that node. And in this case, we have this really hard rock with soft sediments in between. And I like to, at this point, add in a, like a snow uh, node or whatever. But in this case, you can really see that uh, it's actually pretty nice on its own, like just like this. So we started with this ended with this, something completely different and just two notes. It's so nice. It's just so nice. Then we have shear. Uh, shear is going to be kind of a, we have to play with it a little bit to bring out some different details. Um, but what it's trying to do is it's trying to expose stratification and rock edges. So let's go ahead and hover over this. Uh, it creates rock shearing and exposes strata. Yeah, there we go. And you can see the rock shearing here. And the stratification will come from its processing like right here and right here and right here. So uh, it is one of those effects that's a little bit harder to see, especially on a multifractal, but you would use this for like, <clears throat> um, like an alpine ridge. If you use like the ridge fractal, uh, you can get a really good effect with this. So uh, uh, one major thing inside of the shear node is that you can self-modulate it. So you can do, you can shear a landscape based on the scale of the shearing, which you can set manually. We'll go ahead and change that. You can see here I increased it quite a bit. Um, now we have very few areas that are being sheared. Uh, or you can self-modulate it and Gaia will just kind of do what it thinks it should do on its own. You can see the stratification here the exposed strata and the rock shearing. And this works pretty well in conjunction with uh, stacks. This effect right here is hard to get uh, <coughs> if you're not playing, uh, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing in your terracing. And it's hard to be selective of certain areas in a procedural program because it's just going to either apply everywhere or be very selective in where you choose to put it. Uh, and you can do that with a mask node, but having shear do it for you based on what Gaia thinks is best, which is usually a good way to go, um, it's a lot easier. And you can still be selective, but this has a mask node. So if you wanted to put a mask, if you want to use one of the, uh, if you wanted to use a mask node, like right here, you can definitely do that, attach it to here and then attach it as a mask to the mask input there. And then you can draw in where you want it to be applied. That's definitely something that you can do. We'll just do it like right here, I guess. Oops. Right there. We'll just do something really big and bulbous. There we go. <clears throat> And now it's only appearing in that one area. So uh, that will take care of all the look dev nodes. You saw how easy it is to go with one node and maybe no more than four nodes ever is really needed when doing this. So, or when using the look dev nodes. And I don't know, I can't remember if I explained it at the beginning, but the look dev nodes are extremely important for uh, new people uh, that, that are just jumping into Gaia because they might open this program and look at all these different options and get kind of scared or anything like that. 
look dev nodes, in my opinion, is, uh, and this might very well be the case, uh, but the way I look at these look dev nodes is that they are just a macro of a bunch of other nodes that we already have put together to create good looking effects that are easy to just throw in there for simple prototyping and get something nice looking really quick. And so if you're new to Gaia, you saw how easy it was. It just took four nodes or less to create a good looking terrain that we can use in our video games or our movies or TV shows or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and you didn't have to dive into 90, 92% uh, of the program. So uh, you can easily get what you need just by using the look dev nodes. Some quick plugs before I end this video, uh, just because uh, I want to uh, start trying to expand on this a little bit more. If you are interested in learning more about Gaia and actually engaging with a community that is active and always posting and asking questions and answering questions, you can join the Discord that I created. <clears throat> you don't have to be any kind of subscriber to anything that I have. Uh, you can just join whenever you want. It's free and open to anyone. We just had two people join today, uh, not too long ago. So uh, we are having people join constantly. Um, we are up to a little over 30 people now, uh, and it's been growing ever since. We I, I think I get new people who join the Discord at least once or twice a week, maybe even more. Uh, and sometimes they, they come in pairs. <laughs> sometimes they come... Uh, really quickly like this guy right here he joined a couple days ago uh, then we didn't really have anybody for a bit but I would say on average we're getting one or two people every day um, so uh, that's really good and uh, I like that and you can post anywhere you want in any of these except for two parts you can only post if you are a monthly or yearly subscriber in these two membership areas but everywhere else uh, you can post if you are allowed to uh, the exceptions might be the guidelines, the rules, and the frequently asked questions, and the showcase, uh, because we try to keep conversations out of the showcase. But people are posting the work that they are making and asking for critiques and whatnot. Um, we have a showcase chat where we, we can talk about what people post. Uh, you can post your images in here. We'll talk about it, so on and so forth. Really awesome, great community that we're building up here. If you want to join, feel free. I will post a link to the Discord in the uh, video description. One more thing is, is I don't want to peddle this on anybody because I hate it. It's what every YouTube do you you YouTuber does. But if you do like the video, please like the video because it'll help the video get out there. And the way YouTube works, it's stupid now, uh, but it's the way it works in the background with whatever algorithm that YouTube is using. Uh, if you don't like a video, it's not going to get out there. It's not going to be seen. So we kind of have to work together as a community to like what we like so that we have more people watch what we like. That's essentially it. I don't want to peddle that too much on you guys. Just like I don't have, I don't have any uh, paid sponsors. I don't have ads, any of that stuff. I just want to create the content and give it to you guys. Um, so like the video so it gets out there. If you wouldn't mind, please. <clears throat> and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe as well because sub subscriber count is actually a part of that as well, unfortunately. Um, but if you haven't subscribed, if you're kind of out in the background and you watch my videos but you don't subscribe, just subscribe and like the videos and that would really help. Uh, one other thing is, is that you can visit the Gumroad store I have up. I'll put the link in there. If you want to become a monthly or yearly subscriber, it's $5 a month or $60 a year. <clears throat> That's more than a cup of coffee uh, per month. So, uh, or that's less than, if you were to buy one cup of coffee every day, that is still less than what you would pay for that cup of coffee. I don't I'm tired at this point. <laughs> so anyways, <clears throat> and my throat's getting dry. Uh, it's the same thing for the $60 a year. There are some additional benefits for the yearly subscribers, but as a monthly subscriber, you get any new content that I create that includes any of the guides I have recently made that are on sale um, or any 3D content I make uh, or any future exclusive tutorials that might be made for monthly and yearly subscribers. So if you want to help the channel grow uh, and provide more incentive to give you guys content to work with and to learn from, 
consider becoming a monthly or yearly subscriber. As long as you are a subscriber, you will get the benefits and you will get more than your month's worth as soon as you subscribe. There is a lot of content there that you can download and work with and learn from and <clears throat> you will most definitely get your money's worth. So if you uh, want any of those benefits, please consider becoming a monthly or yearly subscriber. Links in the description. All right. Thank you. I'm done peddling stuff to you guys. I will see you in the uh, next video.